speaking of uh, Lux Interior from the Cramps, I guess here's the lore anyway. Back in the day, um, Lux made a mixtape called uh, Jesus Fuck It's Christmas. And mm-hmm. it's like a Christmas mixtape. Um, mm-hmm. But some people have put that um, playlist, like made it on Spotify. So really? if you're looking for a Christmas playlist to play that isn't terrible and annoying, mm-hmm. uh, yeah, I would check that out. And I'm just telling you wow. and the listeners, um, it's pretty good. I know mm-hmm. I've I've definitely heard about the cramps and I've been told that I probably should check them out. Um, uh, yeah, I don't know. They're so. they're really cool. Uh, I think that mm-hmm. they are really they don't get enough credit. They seem to come out of nowhere, sort of like the residents. It's like, what's the foundation for this? Like, it doesn't make any sense, you know? Yeah. I don't know. Uh, I think they're really a cool band. With that being said, I can only handle about three songs in a row. Yeah. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) All right. citizens of earth welcome to accelerative thrust i am dan and i am eric and today we're going to talk about some stuff that eric recommended wait oh Uh, cool yes so uh speaking of um you know starting there uh you wanted me to start somewhere (laughs) with a couple of things eric oh okay Um, yes and i started there with both Mm -hmm. things oh snap so the first thing is I finally got around to listening to Young Marble Giants. Oh, yeah. And I know that you totally recommended them. Mm-hmm. And I realized when I was listening to it that I had heard the album before. I had oh. heard Colossal Youth before. Cool. Um, but I totally was listening to it. And I'm like, wait a minute. I've heard this song before. And mm-hmm. I'm like, mm-hmm. oh, crap. Yes. Mad Lib. He oh. sampled it on the Sound Ancestors. Album. Yeah, right. And and sampled and nearly the whole song. <laughs> nearly the whole song. I remember and, talking about that. Yeah. <laughs> and yes, you did talk about that. And I'm like, holy crap. Okay, so when I heard that singing on the Mad Lib album when we reviewed it, mm-hmm. I was like, this sounds familiar. It's because I had already heard it. And of course, I'd heard Credit in the Straight World because Hole covered it. We talked about that. Yep. Um. But anyway, uh, wow. Yeah, fantastic album. I'm really glad you recommended that. I think um, it's uh, foundational in a way. You know what I mean? Like there's certain things that are touchstones. Absolutely. And nothing else really represents that. And you can see where, I don't know how much you're into like beat happening. Mm-hmm. Um, or have you heard much beat happening at all? Just a little, actually. Um, yeah. You can you can see where a band like beat happening or even to a certain extent, like something like mates of state Mm -hmm. or like, uh, which I'm sure you've heard of mates of state because the enemy of the show, Chuck was obsessed with them. I don't know if he still is. I think I'm sure he still is. Cause I, I I don't think he gives up on his obsessions too easily. No, he just adds more. He just adds more. Exactly. Um, just just pushing his tiny brain to the limits. (laughs) Exactly. The enemy of the show <laughs> has a small brain that push he pushes to the limit. There's nothing wrong with this brain. So you can see where a band like Young Marble Giants made it possible for people to be like, we don't need drums. And in fact, mm-hmm. we barely need instruments. No. Yeah. You know what I mean? Basically like, a bass and a voice, you know? like A bass and a voice. And I mean, there's some synth in it's, there or uh, organ or whatever, but... Yeah. Well, they also do use like a little like Casio drum like beat yeah. box thing, or and something. there is some guitar actually. It's just so yeah, angular and slight. Like, and it's just it's strangely used. You know, it's it's the most minimalist, perhaps the most minimalist thing I've ever heard. Nice, and it's yeah. fantastic. Yeah. So there's another thing um, mm-hmm. that uh, you recommended, and mm-hmm. I'm. Prob- this is probably even more. I mean, I love the Young Marble Giants, but this is even more substantial. I'm afraid. 
the Weird Al movie. <laughs> yeah. My <laughs> gosh. We're talking about a cinematic masterpiece. You know, I don't disagree with you. And I'm not I mean, just saying that. I'm not just saying that either. This, this is the best movie I've seen since, like, <laughs> Napoleon Dynamite. Sweet. And I'm not shitting you. Like, this yeah. is... Because Napoleon Dynamite, I don't know how that movie hits with you, but Napoleon Dynamite is in my top five favorite movies, hands yeah. down. My favorite movie of all time is Stand By Me. I don't know if I ever said that, but... I think we have. Napoleon yeah. Dynamite is easily probably number three to me. Because nice. number two would be Forrest Gump for me. But anyway. Oh, I thought for sure it was going to be Secret of the Ooze. Number two? <laughs> yeah. Because it's part no, two, man. you know. <laughs> yeah, no, 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 man. Okay, it's number three. Turtles in oh. time. <laughs> <laughs> That's the one, dude. Are you so, Turtles three is your number two favorite. Movie. <laughs> you know what? Oh, I yeah. think it might be my number one now. Oh, uh, but uh, wow. No. Um. Uh, anyway, yeah, this Weird Al movie, man. <laughs> yeah. Holy crap. Favorite part. Well, I don't know what my favorite. The whole movie is my favorite part. What a genius idea to make right? a movie about. A, that's a, a God, I don't know if I even want to say it because anybody who hasn't seen this movie needs to go see it. That's all I got to say. Well, I mean, uh, it is a parody movie. I mean, it, 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 yes. it's a documentary about a parody artist that's done as a parody as a as a parody life. of his life it's pretty meta and the laughs are meta i'll be the judge of when we get too meta like a, it's it causes some oh deep weird laughter you know? it really does <laughs> it's man i'll tell you what though i am gonna go ahead and spoil a couple of parts i can't help myself <laughs> Great. the accordion salesman that whole <laughs> scene is just like amazing but yeah. then also i love the argument that they're having at the dinner table and he's like you're gonna like his dad is like getting on him about changing the words to like a so that's not the right yeah. words <laughs> right i just can't do it justice until until you actually mm -hmm. see it for yourself because yeah the, the way i'm explaining it sounds stupid you know so let's go ahead since this is the best of i don't even know if we've mentioned that yet this is the best of episode i think we mentioned mm -hmm. last episode we were gonna do that so people are probably somewhat prepared but let, i'm just gonna go on the record and say best movie of 2022 Weird Al. Yeah, I um, was there any other movies that came out this year? I don't know. I yeah, I, I really don't know. I I don't know. I, <laughs> I seriously, I I I mean, I, I saw the I saw... horror movies that you know sort of bubbled up to the mainstream. Were Barbarian any of them and even Smile like and... even anywhere near like this? Halloween and Hellraiser. Uh, well, yeah. I don't know. No, no, they weren't mm -hmm. as enjoyable as Weird Al. No, no. But, you know, I have a little rant about that, but maybe I'll save it till later in the episode. So, okay. Let's, you know what? <laughs> I, I think that would be a perfect segue right there to go yeah. into these records. All right. I mean, you know, let's we got it. Come on, everybody. It's record time. Who are we going to, who's going to start this off? I think you should start this off, Eric. Let's because... do rock, paper, scissors. <laughs> Rock, paper, scissors, shoot. What'd you have? Uh, the rock. Oh man, I had scissors. <laughs> no. Are you serious? Okay. How many how many times are we gonna do this? Okay, that's three out of five. Rock, okay. paper, scissors, shoot. Scissors. Oh, I had paper. No, are you serious? Okay. I'm dead uh, serious. Three out of five. Being okay. honest. Okay. All right. Rock, paper, scissors, shoot. Uh, 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 paper. I had rock. I'm not even joking. Okay, so does this. So I guess so you're starting this? it, bro. Uh, <laughs> yep, you won three out of five. You run three out of three. It was amazing. Do you? <laughs> I know I mean, you don't believe me. Are but you I'm, serious? I am totally serious. I wish I would have had my camera on. I okay. Top ten albums of 2022. I'm going to preface this real quick, mm -hmm. and I'm going to say that there was a lot of great local music. Mm -hmm. And I am proud to say that looks like four of my top 10 wow. were either Illinois or Iowa releases. That's that we amazing. Nice All, job. 
all of them we talked about. All of them we talked about. So uh, the local ones. Mm -hmm. So in at number 10 is one of those. And that is Moody Marlin, the Catalypsis mm. Converter 25 um, on Pokey's Records. This is by far one of the most interesting releases I've heard the entire year. Mm -hmm. um, it's pretty outsider-ish, which I really liked. I love the fact that it was just separated by two sides that were about 15 minutes long a piece or something like that. And they're really, I don't know if there's titles to the songs or not, but it, it just sounded like a couple of complete pieces of just outsider weirdness. And I don't, but it's like, you know, outsider, we talked about this in our review a little bit, Eric, mm -hmm. um, calling it just simply outsider music is sort of unfair because there was actually some real talent going on there mm -hmm. and uh, some great songs, some great weirdness. The weirdness factor is what I really liked about it. If you like the resonance, if you like, I don't know, Captain Beefheart, um, I mean, and countless others, Ween, Beck, like early Beck, especially. Mm -hmm. uh, this is this was a great release. Uh, Pokey's Records. It's also I like the fact that it, and I and I like everything that Pokey's Records put up this year, mm -hmm. but this definitely is a standout release on that label. So. Good yeah. job, Moody Marlin and Pokey's Records. Nice. Um, my list doesn't have locals on it, but they were my honorable mentions. So I don't know if okay. that counts. But definitely Moody Marlin is in my honorable mentions. It, it was amazing. So, yeah, I loved it. Yep. Um, my num Okay, so here's the deal. My top five records are in order of how much... I like them or whatever. My bottom five are not really in order. They're just sort of put together. So um, the one that just happens to be on the bottom of my list is one that was actually suggested by our anti-friend Chuck. I feel embarrassed <laughs> that he told me about something I actually liked. And so I don't know. I'm just going to have to bring that up to my therapist or something that's not <laughs> something we're going to explore on the show i don't want to i don't want to cry and i don't I, I just don't think our listeners need to hear me work through liking a suggestion from chuck anyway okay so it's called vincent presley the record is called and the secret creeps volume one yeah this is super weird um I think Chuck told me about it. I I think he actually thought I might like it. Um, but it also featured uh, Ronaldo from Ronaldo and the Loaf from Ralph Records. So sort of an association with the residents there a little bit. Uh, he's on one of the tracks. So I think that's why he told me about it. But yeah, it's like, um, it's weird. It's hard synth wave kind of stuff. John Carpenter-esque. Uh, elements of dark wave, no wave, all the waves, all the different waves. Um, there are guests on each of the tracks and they sort of shape the track, you know, which we do see from time to time on some of the albums that we talk about. Like if every track has a guest on it, it starts to, you know, slightly conform to what they do a little bit. So there are some pop elements. There's a, a experimental sounds textures mostly done on electronics and synths um but yeah uh super eclectic pretty goofy um and also just yeah there's a lot going on it, it it's in that sort of goofy music where uh we um kind of category but also done really well i would say if you like the residents bruce hack tuxedo moon i don't know vincent presley and the secret creeps volume one i've already i've written that down <laughs> i need to check that out so uh okay number nine is yet another local and that's uh our last interview uh mm. Je jessica julinski mm -hmm. um otherwise known as chachka chameleon grievances i just thought that this was a really interesting listen and an interesting experience um just overall uh, I like the fact that I can't really 
fully explain what it is. Um, but then at the same time, I can also think of a lot of references. Like, you know, I, I can think of a lot of things that it reminds me of. But at the same time, it's completely 100% tchotchka. And I can see looking more into like her visual style, how this is definitely something that would come out of her. Yeah, it's got elements, parts that definitely sound like uh, maybe like little interludes. Maybe some of it sounds like musical passages. There's some really neat guitar work, like particularly that last track that we talked about um, in our review of it a couple episodes back. Mm -hmm. I think some of the stuff we sort of, that kind of brought up both in our interview and review of it is like, you know, stuff like Nurse with Wound. Um, Negative Land was kind of something that uh, came to mind and quite a bit of other things. Uh, so yeah, if you're kind of into just sort of experimental psychedelic stuff, uh, that's this was a, a great release and you should check it out for sure. Yeah. So that's my number nine pick. Chachka is great stuff. And uh, yeah, the interview with Jessica, I think was really fun. So you should listen to that if you haven't. Absolutely. A lot of really great stuff like that we touched upon as far as art, mm -hmm. the sure. art world and the music world. And, yeah. Um, and I pretended to know what Jessica was talking about. Um, absolutely. Some of the times yes. th during that. But in reality, her um, deep knowledge of, of uh, the fine arts and graphic arts uh, left me in the dust. I had. Yeah, uh, I, I was um, I was way out of my uh, depth there. So absolutely. Cool. <laughs> and what's interesting. <laughs> yeah. Great stuff. Then that's, that's just a sample of stuff that we touched upon. So yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Check it out for sure. Uh, the next one on my list. Um, this one was suggested by my friend, Nick, whose birthday was yesterday. So happy birthday, Nick. It's called my, 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 but it's not M Y it's M A I M A I M A I M A I my, my, my. The record's called <laughs> Remorso, R-I-M-O-R-S-O. -O. Um, this was cool. Uh, he knew what he was doing when he suggested it to me. I meant to get this onto the show the whole year and never, never did. Um, but yeah, it's uh, really atmospheric. It has a lot of like ritualistic sort of... Um, tribalistic rhythms um heavy heavy synths very mechanical sounds a lot like machinery at times um it's formless in a way yet super rigid in its presentation uh, a lot of d different kind of cultural elements um it has sort of a weird folk slash anthropological horror element i know that sounds weird but if you can imagine things like on one end like cannibal holocaust or, or or things like that and on the other end maybe like midsummer or wicker man or something like that so it has those elements and it is kind of creepy it's at least dark um and kind of gothy in its own weird way uh also really dubby and sort of hypnotizing a lot of cool vocal samples. Uh, it reminded me of a couple things. Uh, Muslim gays or Muslim gauze. I've never actually heard another human say the name of that group, so I'm not sure. Uh, maybe a little Throbbing Gristle, a little Cabaret Voltaire, but um, maybe a little more um, bombastic and rigid than those examples. But yeah, super good. My, my, my. I'll have to check that one out. That's another one I'm not familiar with, but that sounds very interesting. Okay, so my number eight pick is the first one on my list that we didn't talk about, like like that pick you were talking about, Eric, mm -hmm. the my, my, my pick. Um, I tried to get this one on the show as well, but it just never happened. Um, this is uh, from a band called City of Caterpillar, and the name of the uh, album is Mystic Sisters. And City of Caterpillar um, were a, and I guess they got back together recently, maybe. Um, I'm not really sure about the history of this band, 
but uh, they were a kind of a hardcore band, um, but they always had this atmospheric element to them in a weird sort of way, like infused like hardcore with like God speed you black emperor or something along those lines. And this record, the production is very um, like rigid. It's very um, dense at also. Um, I mean, the vocals are almost like buried in the production. Hmm. At times it's very like Fugazi ish. Uh, but then what will happen a lot of times compositionally, this band is very interesting because they will kind of do this like long intro. And when I say long intro, I mean long intro, like they, they will seriously do like this intro where they're kind of like building up for like six, seven minutes. And then all of a sudden blast into like the song and it just changes into like a two minute hardcore song or something. Hmm. It's really interesting stuff. And they've always kind of done this. Um, but I'll be honest. Uh, I had a lot of friends who were into this band and I never really got into them. Never really listened to them until this record was recommended to a friend of mine by the name of John Spaulding. Uh, who lives in Clinton. He's also a former bandmate with Brian Barr mm. and Eric from a Seath. They used to be in a mm. band together called Parish's Fools way back in the mm. day. So this is how I heard of this release. Um, and uh, I've listened to it probably five times in the past couple of months, mm. uh, which is a lot for kind of a, any new release today, to be honest, um, mm -hmm. it, and it's, it just captures me, man. It's, it's really good stuff. It's like, if you like the best parts of Fugazi, if you like botch even, or something along those lines, or like just that sort of early two thousands era of like hardcore metal fusion. And then also the sort of like, yeah. Atmospheric instrumental stuff. Like, yeah, a Godspeed, Silver Mountain, Zion, mm -hmm. um, you know, stuff like that. Um, this is the kind of like the perfect fusion of those, like both of those elements. So City of Caterpillar, Mystic Sisters, uh, highly recommended. Nice. Um, my next one is one that we talked about previously. Um, it's Exec, E-X-E-K. The record was called Advertise Here. And we already did a long, especially long review of this record mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. it caused us some some discomfort, you know, and we sort mm -hmm. of had to work our way through it. So, um, and that's that's real. Now you're gonna feel that if you listen to this record. So anyway, I'm not gonna talk too much about it because, like I said, we already did. But this is really strange, angular, uh, mellow though. Um, you know, all the waves again, no wave, new wave, uh, elements of dream pop though, too. Um, and elements of just chill music too, you know, like current popular chill stuff like cigarettes after sex, uh, mm -hmm. washed out things like that. Um, broadcast psychic TV, ESG. Cause there are some fun sort of moments um i hear a little bit of bell and sebastian in there uh my wife informed me that that was not accurate but i i still sort of hear it in there <laughs> but yeah exec advertise here here's what's hilarious about that mm -hmm. that's my number seven pick whoa <laughs> yeah a exec advertised here it technically um, is my number seven but i i skipped ahead because my next choice has a very similar name so does anyway, it really so we both had it as number seven in real life <laughs> that's that's cool that's great yeah. uh no yeah this this record blew me away in so many ways because i still to this day don't know what it is i i, I don't know what it is mm -hmm. I, I don't know what this music is like it just it's very like like i mentioned um i'm still trying to dissect it it's like some sort of mutated form of pop music or something yeah to me. it's it's really like okay you know how like they always when you hear chefs 
on like food shows talk about deconstructed dishes they make. Yeah, sure. That's what this is. Only, only in, it's like deconstructed pop music. It's yeah, it's straight. And you hear a lot of bands say that, oh, we're we're gonna deconstruct mu- music. You know, they mm. really did it. Yeah, like I just I can't even. And still, that first song, the lyrics, mm-hmm. it just I, it's mind boggling. Yeah. This I almost picked this as like my favorite album, but I mm-hmm. I don't know. I it it, it just can't quite get there for me but it is amazing yeah it's fantastic i i I can't even describe it yeah that's hilarious though that we picked the same record in the same spot so yeah it it is really funny so i guess now i'll do my rate my real number seven or the one yeah this is your this is your or is it your fake number Mm, seven it's my fake number seven it's my real number because it yeah i was gonna say exact (laughs) sounded like your real number seven but you changed it it is um, so <laughs> my number eight, that is now number seven, is Excess by Automatic. It's cool. It's super fun. Very ultra no wavy. Like, this is just on the edge of being like a revival act. I'm saying that it's almost that because it absolutely right. is not that. They have taken old forms and made them really exciting and new. Um yeah, it's super punky. It's like has its own laziness about it, but also super energetic and upbeat. Um, did I say super fun? Super fun. Yeah, you did. Um, you did. Sparse arrangements, super effective, uh, really bass forward, a lot of really big synthesizers too, uh, and just a very cool attitude. Um, but I will say, uh, it reminded me a lot of Young Marble Giants, which is cool that uh-huh. you brought that up. But um, uh-huh. uh, in how much they rely on pretty much a drum a drum beat. It is a real drummer. But the drums, the bass, and the vocals, it makes up a huge element of almost every song. So, But yeah. then these huge synthesizers come in and, uh, and, and change it. So a little bit like Talking Heads. Like Mm -hmm. early, early Berlin, like the Metro song in particular. And uh, a lot like Two Boy Army, like that level of angularity, just like severe, you know. Um, But yeah, super fun. Of all the things on my list, this is maybe the only one that I would say is fun to listen to. So take Mm -hmm. note of that if you want to have fun. I've listened to that whole album. Uh, It is a fantastic album. This next band, this next release, yeah. is actually all over the place right now. They're huge in the metal world, and I'm talking about Ghost. Mm. Uh, number six, the album Impera, Ghost, which we reviewed yeah. um, months ago. Uh, I love this album, man. It's mm-hmm. it's it's addictive. It's catchy, and like the Automatic album, I would say that this is probably the most fun to listen to on my well. Mm-hmm. Mm, maybe not maybe not uh there's another one that's super fun to listen to uh but i i would say this to me this album is super fun to listen to because as i mentioned in my review it's very um kind of just puts me in mind of like sort of that whole sort of satanic panic era Mm -hmm. of like heavy metal growing up you know Mm -hmm. which i you know i i I think that's kind of their intent. I I think they're just really sort of like embracing like the sort of theater of metal, you know, we kind of talked about that. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, the music's kind of cheesy or whatever, a little bit. I'm I'm not going to deny that, but it's fun. It's good. It's very well put together. Mm -hmm. And um, from beginning to end, man, I think it's just a hit. And uh, honestly, I don't care how popular it is. I, I think it's fantastic. I know there's a lot of haters of this band for some reason, and I don't understand it. I love it. I think it's great. Um, and yeah, so that's hmm. my number six pick, Ghost. And, uh, you know, of course, I just need to put like, you know, a six before the six and then a six oh, after the six. yeah. Yes. Your because, six, you know, six, six pick. The number of the beast. That, that's my metal release. So, nice. you know, but yeah, Ghost Impura. Yeah. I loved that. Yeah. Actually, it was super good. So, so good, man. It just yeah. well put together. And it's not metal that 
is really, I don't think it's breaking any, any boundaries. It's, Mm -hmm. you're not hearing anything new that no one's ever not done, you know? Yeah. But in in fact, you're hearing things that are very reminiscent of old things, but of old things. Yeah. It's all compiled into one sort of, one sort of package. And I think it's really cool. I like ghost. I mean, I've only heard the one record. So for me to say, I like them maybe, um, I don't know, inaccurate, but I want to listen to the rest of it. So, and the rest, I mean, I think what I've heard of the rest of the albums, I think I've, I haven't heard one thing that I dislike about the band. Nice. I just, I think this kind of, the sort of funness mm-hmm. of this sort of stuff is, it's something that is kind of missing in metal a lot. Well, you know? that's probably and, why people hate it because it's fun. That, exactly. Like, like one thing that gatekeepers never like is fun music. Right. It doesn't matter if it's heavy metal or punk rock or any of the genres where people feel they have to protect the scene from the norms. Uh, Yeah. Like uh, having fun will surely get you not a lot of accolades. Let's put it that way. Yeah. Absolutely. If you want to fail, make your music fun. (laughs) Make 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 everyone like your music. Right. You know, my uh, 666 pick is also actually kind of fun in its own dark way. Um, mm-hmm. Just as Ghost was fitting for your 666 pick. Sure. Um, Kill Alters is also something oh, fitting for yes. mine. Oh, uh, yes. Yes, We reviewed this <clears throat> not that long ago either. Mm-hmm. Uh, maybe I just have a short memory, and so that's mm-hmm. why... I, more recent reviews made their way on my list. But, yeah. Um, yeah. I love this record. I was, I don't want to say blown away. It's not like I heard things I've never heard before or anything like that, but I was just like really into it. It was really fun to listen to and constructed in such a cool old school sort of way um, that it, it, it was somewhat disarming and made me take notice of it. And I n- ended up really loving it. But like I said, go back and listen to the full review. Um, The short version is super dense production, pretty much constructed from just samples, drum machine, um, which is somewhat rare these days. Um, Yeah, it has a real heavy, uh, heavy on the effects sort of thing. But yeah, somewhere in that wax tracks, Chicago industrial kind of world i think this could live pretty easily uh Mm -hmm. the things that reminded me of maybe were like mimi barks atari teenage riot and uh my life with the thrill kill cult in a lot of ways um yeah kill alters i really enjoyed that yeah it's fantastic record and i i actually have all their other releases queued up on my spotify but i haven't gotten around to listening to it because i really really like this record a Mm -hmm. lot it was fantastic All right, so my number five, this is another release that I didn't get to, but is just incredible, um, in my opinion. This is coming from the hip-hop world. Believe it or not, I do talk a lot about hip-hop on the show. Mm -hmm. I probably listen to less hip-hop in 2022 than any other year, to be honest. Mm -hmm. Um, There just has not been a lot of new releases that have really just captured me so much, but this is definitely one of them. And I just, for, for whatever reason, it's kind of a mystery, but I just never got it to the show, but maybe, maybe sometime in 2023, it'll be on the show. And this is uh, from a rapper by the name of Billy Woods. And the name of the album is Atheops. And uh, it is incredible. It's just this, very well put together, hardcore. Well, I no, nah, not hardcore. It's not hardcore. It's, but it is very abrasive sounding beats. But also, it has this sort of experimental, laid back jazz quality to it as well. It's, it's sort of somewhere between the griminess of like, I don't know, Wu Tang and early like sort of early Aesop rock beats or something like sort of that bazooka tooth record that we 
reviewed a while mm-hmm. back, like a long time ago. But there's also like this very like sort of almost jazziness to it, this sort of brooding, dark jazziness to it, like musically and just lyrically. It's it's just unbelievable. And also the sound of his voice. He's got a very vibrant tone to his voice. And that's kind of what I look for in MCs. We've talked about this. I'm not necessarily a huge fan of MCs that I can't really understand or that doesn't articulate what they're saying very well. And it, yeah. it, sometimes I like that. It, it works, but I really like to hear the MC. And Billy Woods is just that. Like he's he's that rapper for me in 2022. This this record is unbelievable, and I'm pretty sure. Just a spoiler alert, Eric. I'm pretty sure I am gonna probably pick this as one of my picks cool. sometime in 2023 because I believe you need to hear this. Nice. So yeah, um, I, I actually think you would listened really to enjoy it. Uh, a long, long time ago, I listened to a record called "History Will Absolve Me." by billy woods Mm -hmm. yep and i really enjoyed it um but i never pursued anything after that so i i would say this is um yeah man i i don't know i i love it it's it's on a label too that uh the backwood studios and they're for me they're kind of putting out the best hip-hop right now Mm -hmm. um i mean quelly chris is is uh is on on it too who of course we reviewed death fame Mm -hmm. and um they're all kind of linked together like quelly chris and some of these other rappers and stuff who actually i'll if we do do a um our uh honorable mentions i have a few of them in my honorable mentions as well so cool all right billy woods athiopes up yeah my next pick may have elements of that in there too um it's not Mm -hmm. hip-hop necessarily um but it's the soul glow record from this year diaspora problems Mm -hmm. i don't know how to say that um so we reviewed the soul glow record before this and i think we were both pretty blown away by it um and -hmm. this one follows that up amazingly i think um i think there might even be a little bit more of a hip-hop element to it um they at least don't try to bury it or hide it under other elements like hardcore and noise, like sometimes pure hip hop makes its way through, which is pretty cool. Um, but yeah, if you know Soul Glow, you know what they sound like. It's um, really pretty wild hardcore, like 80s era hardcore almost. Really wild elements of hip hop. The vocals are just outrageously intense. It always feels like the music the whole thing is on the edge of collapse. Like it's just going to fall apart because it's just, it's so earnest and intense that there's no way they can keep that energy up, but they do. Uh, It makes it feel really urgent and real. And I I really enjoyed it. It's, it's a really cool record. Um, uh, Yeah. As far as things to compare it to, I don't know. There's all sorts of stuff, but bad brains for sure um saul williams uh show me the body in some ways at least the hardcore elements of it um but yeah if you want to hear a perfectly irate combination of hardcore and hip-hop i would say this soul glow record does it yeah absolutely it's it's it is fantastic um i would also throw in like comparisons to like third face to that as well Mm -hmm. yeah like it just yeah it's very intense and there is definitely more of a i feel like a hip-hop element to it well after the record that we reviewed Mm -hmm. they put out a mixtape series like Mm. sort of thing like volume one and two and uh that definitely had more of a hip-hop element to it for sure Mm -hmm. so i think they kind of explored that a little bit more cool Uh, but yeah um Soul Glow, fantastic release. Yeah. Uh, number four is uh, another Iowa City release, and that is from Penny Peach, and that's the mm-hmm. Ego Party. I just love this record, and the more and more I hear it, the more I like it. Um, just really good, like, rock music um, sometimes, but then there's also just this 
really gorgeous element to it. I think that there's a lot of experimentation that goes on here, but it's the songs are just really well put together. Some of the best that I've heard in this area, uh, to be honest, just presentation, delivery, everything about it's just great. And I don't know. I I don't really have much more to say about it. Uh, yeah, listen to our to our review if you want to hear more of a description. I, I would yeah. say like loosely. I mean, it's hard to really compare her compare Penny Peach to like you know anything solidly. But I don't know. So sometimes I hear a little bit of like I don't know White Stripes. Sometimes I hear a little bit of like Bikini Kill kind of going on a little bit or something mm-hmm. like that. But it's there's a lot of stuff you know, going on here. And it's mm-hmm. just a great release. And I'm just, I'm glad that there was so much interesting music coming from Iowa this year. For sure. Yeah. Uh, I would say that the Penny Peach review that we did, that is my most excited review probably of the year. I don't, I can't even explain how excited I was about that record. And it 100% is my number one honorable mention of the year. Honestly, the only reason it didn't make my top 10 is, uh, this is going to sound terrible, but because it's local. like, And I just, for whatever reason, saw that as a separate list. And I, I realize now I, I shouldn't have done that. But yeah, Penny Peach is phenomenal. It stands shoulder to shoulder with anything else on my list. So. Yeah, Definitely, period. Like, it's yep. uh, fantastic. So good. So good. Yeah. So my number four is by an artist named Rashika Nair or Nair. Um, uh, the record's called Heaven Comes Crashing. Uh, the reason I heard about this is that um, Chris Wersima brought them here to perform. Um, I don't know what was going on with me, but I didn't make it to many of those um performances during the uh feed me weird things feast i wish i would have uh i did get to see godspeed but i didn't get to see masma dream world which was uh, i really wanted to see and then also rashika nair yeah this record is really cinematic it's kind of like long form electronic pieces but not really there's like grand movements it has uh like an arc to each song that can teeter between i mean like real symphonic i don't know orchestral music to sparse electronics it utilizes strong rhythms whether they be sort of purposefully electronic sounding or just you know uh maybe real drums at times uh there's actually a lot of really cool guitar work on there as well which doesn't seem like it would fit into that setting uh But yeah, it takes you through some really cool environments because of what it is and how it moves and the fact that there's a lot of guitar. It mostly reminds me of like um, post-rock stuff, like Godspeed You Black Emperor, but in a really different way because there is a lot of electronics present. So maybe a bit like Terry Riley or Pole Pole View or something like that. But yeah, really cinematic and just really pretty, but also really, uh, really cool. And, and immersive so yeah rashika nair that's cool that sounds uh very interesting for sure mm-hmm. so my number three pick uh i mean this is this is definitely the one that i would say is the most fun to, to listen to mm-hmm. um and also hands down the most commercial of everything probably that we've ever reviewed on the podcast <laughs> I, we've kind of talked about this mm-hmm. and that is the interrupters in the wild um this is such a good record to me um it's definitely very very produced extremely produced but the songs are just undeniable and from beginning to end just i think every song is a banger i think there's also some willingness to do some things that go outside of their comfort zone a little bit um i've explored some of the other interrupters releases since listening to this one and I, I can say that uh, they definitely, I think, did some stuff on this record that they had never done before. But with that being said, it's a record that I think was written and produced with the intent of, um, you know, just making like a good pop songs. But 
Yeah, it's definitely at at its core, and and we mentioned this is a ska record. But mm-hmm. again, I I stand by. I I don't think that it's just a ska record. I think it's much more mm-hmm. than that. I think there's a lot of other elements going on. There's definitely elements of new wave, two tone ska kind of going on. Which, by the way, um, did you hear that the singer of the Specials passed away? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yep. Terry so Hall. Rest- Yep. Yeah. Rest in peace to Terry Hall. Yeah. And I kind of say that because some of the music on this reminded me of the specials. Mm-hmm. For sure. <laughs> and the interrupters, I think, would probably be the first people to tell you that they are, are heavily inspired by the, the specials. Mm-hmm. Uh, you can, I mean, they're on Tim Armstrong's label, so come on, you know? But yeah. um, really, really just good stuff. I mean, the, the just excellent choruses excellent songs Mm -hmm. excellent hooks and um yeah amy interrupter's voice i think is it's like i said to me it sounds a lot like courtney love if she was sort of fronting a ska band and i think it works perfectly i think that they they're in their zone and i just man kudos to the interrupters i think that they and and normally i don't this isn't necessarily the type of music that I step into and that, that I'm like, Oh, I'm going to listen to this, but the interrupters are definitely an exception when it comes to that, you know, cause I'm not a huge ska fan, Mm -hmm. you know, but I do like a few ska bands that stand out. The interrupters, they're definitely one of those exceptions. I, I, I love this album. Nice. So yeah, my number three pick. I enjoyed that one too. It was good. Um, my number three pick is not very fun at all. In fact, <laughs> I don't know if there's one moment of fun on the whole thing. So, <laughs> uh, the album is uh, by an artist named Backwash or Back X Wash. We reviewed an album by them mm-hmm. uh, last year, year before. I don't know, some time back. This record is called His Happiness Shall Come First, Even Though We Are Suffering. And uh, I'm just blown away by this record. It It is maybe one of the most intense things I've ever heard, honestly. It never slows down. It never stops. And Okay, so it's just very heavy hip-hop at its core. It might venture into aggressive moments and things like that. But I don't think they're trying to accomplish or try to present it as something different than that. It's just very heavy, slow, brooding. Yeah, it never really stops. Like I said, it just keeps building. Every track gets more intense as it goes on. And it, it almost to a point that you can't even handle what you're hearing anymore. It, it, you can hear the real anger, real frustration, tons of uh, vocal samples from movies or just found sources that help sort of define what the anger is pointed at. It's sort of like a from the trenches commentary on race, gender, class, religion, you know, just a lot of things covered uh, in a really brooding, heavy way. Uh, It reminded me sort of of Death Grips in certain ways, Clipping, uh, Ganja Sufi, which we've reviewed on here. But then as far as like the the brooding nature of the whole thing, the lingua ignata, and maybe a little like conate in there as well. So you get where I'm going. It's, it's, it's pretty dark mm-hmm. stuff. But also really empowering and really in its own way kind of pumps you up. It's weird. Uh but yeah, it's a great record. So backwash is happiness wow. shall um, come first, even though we are suffering. That's that's a powerful statement, actually. Um, yeah. The uh, I'm gonna need to revisit the backwash. I'll be I'll be honest. I remember the name, mm-hmm. but I don't remember much about the actual album. But I do remember it being really intense mm-hmm. and really interesting. Um, yeah, it's it's ringing some bells now, but I'm going to have to revisit and I'm going to have to check this album cool. out as well. Yeah. Um, but I definitely remember you mentioned the Ganja Sufi. Mm-hmm. You remember you mentioned clipping and you remember and you mentioned Lingua and Gata. 
I totally remember those. Mm -hmm. And I seem to remember that backwash kind of conjured up a little bit of similar sort of, you know, darkness, you know what Mm -hmm. I mean? Mm -hmm. In a, in a different way. So I'm going to have to, I'm going to have to revisit backwash. That's a, yeah, pretty, uh, sounds like a pretty intense, that's an intense Mm -hmm. title. I really like that title actually. Yeah. So number two is uh, from Tom Caruana, and it is the Strange Planet soundtrack, Mm -hmm. uh, which I don't know if it's actually, I never really found out if Strange Planet is an actual movie or if it's just kind of supposed to be like a soundtrack to a, um, like a movie that's not coming out or something. Mm -hmm. I'm not really sure. In any situation, such a great record. I kind of... I want to say that very recently I said on the podcast that I haven't really listened to it much lately. And so that prompted me to listen to it again. Mm -hmm. It's amazing. It's just like, honestly, like from beginning to end, it's, this is just everything that I like to hear in like hip hop production. And it's, it's very cinematic in parts. It's got a vision from beginning to end clearly it's it's done by a dj that definitely knows what he's doing and knows what he's you can tell he's got an ear for what he's looking for but just the beat selection with the uh the rappers that he chooses over the beats i've discovered quite a few rappers from listening to this album Mm -hmm. like king cashmere comes right off the bat i've i've dug into his catalog and he's fantastic there's a lot of british rappers on here and yeah, I just I think it's a well put together, well orchestrated record. Yeah, that was a cool mm-hmm. record. And I liked it a lot too. I do need to go back and listen to it again though. So yeah. yeah. And it also, I think I think we both mentioned uh just really quickly, we both mentioned mm-hmm. in our review of it that it kind of transported us back to a time of underground rap. Like it kind of mm-hmm. reminded us of like a certain time period, like the early two thousands where mm-hmm. this kind of thing was very common, but it was yeah. a very like updated version of that kind of record, mm-hmm. you know? So For sure. Good stuff. Um, my number two um, would be number one, if it wasn't for my number one, <laughs> I guess that's how number two works. Right. Um, that's no, how I, it is. Yeah. I really loved it. Uh, so yeah this is the original music or the score from the movie smile which is a modern horror movie that um sort of bubbled up to the surface you know which i would say there's usually about four four to five horror movies that kind of make their way into the mainstream every year and i usually try to watch those because i kind of want to know what the main representations are in horror right now. So mm-hmm. anyway, that isn't what drove me to listen to this, though. I was watching a show called White Lotus, and it, sure. it's a really good show. And the opening theme to the second season, I'm not actually sure if it's the same on the first season or not, it actually um, reminded me a lot of uh, Holly Herdnod, if you've ever listened to her music. But it was really cool. So I looked into it. Um And it said it was by this artist, Cristobal Tapia de Vere. Um, Mm -hmm. And I also saw that they had done this score for Smile, which I hadn't seen at that point. So I I said I was going to save a rant for now, and I'll I'll make it quick. Uh, My rant is I like the score so much more than the movie. So if you saw the movie Mm -hmm. and you didn't really like it, don't take it out on the score. Um, I feel like (laughs) horror is in this place right now where uh it's really trauma based mm-hmm. you know we went through a period where it was like torture based we went through a more supernatural period with you know that's sort of an aside it was running congruent with the torture porn stuff but more of a su- supernatural conjuring universe kind of stuff a lot of exorcism movies for a while uh but now i think we're into this trauma uh horror and I don't know if that's a real thing or just something I'm making up right now, but everything seems to be really traumatic. It's, I, I don't know, a lot of pain and suffering and, and 
bad relationships and drug abuse and crying a lot of that stuff you know in horror right now so anyway that's my aside but uh smile the movie fits very squarely in that if not maybe the best representation of that but <laughs> beside all that uh the score for smile is phenomenal um i was truly blown away from the first track i was like this can't really be what this sounds like. Again, I've not seen the movie at this point. Um, and I couldn't imagine how this could be in a movie because it's comprised a lot of like vocal sounding samples. They may not be vocals, but they sound like talking or singing or humming. And it's a really weird element for a score in a, in a movie. Like it's all when you see it in the movie, it's almost distracting. You're like, is someone talking? Like, it's really weird, but whatever. Let's not worry about the movie. The score, very dark, very strange, atmospheric, all that stuff, immersive. You would, you know, assume that a score would have, but it's kind of legitimately scary too. Like I said, there's a lot of vocal elements to it. And when you're in sort of an immersive piece and all of a sudden there's a vocal a quiet vocal element sort of in the background and off to the side or whatever, it's very easy to get legitimately scared by that. Like you, it, 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 with headphones on, you're like, is someone next to me? Is someone behind me? And it really exploits that a lot. Um, and it is distracting and confusing, very disorienting. But because of that, it's almost like shocking how unnerving it is. Um, yeah. Yeah. But I don't think it's like uh, cheap, you know, like a lot of things that shock you with sound come off as sort of cheap, you know, and this doesn't really do that. Um, anyway, I just if you're into that kind of stuff at all, this is just amazing. I would say reminded me of elements of coil, especially uh, having the sounds come in far away and and panned into weird places and things like that. Uh, Stockhausen, Leggetti, those are sort of like more uh, new music or classical elements. Uh, Trent Reznor and Atticus Ross, um, like their Gone Girl score, and an mm. older group called Tear Garden. Uh, they have some stuff that sounds like this too. But yeah, it's uh, very cool. The Smile original music by Cristobal Tapia de Vir. That sounds like something I should uh, definitely pursue. Um, I, I I just kept thinking. Uh, I was hoping that you were gonna say, "There's no crying in horror." <laughs> yeah, right. Exactly. <laughs> That's how it you should know, be. Like, you, you scream or you fight back. One right. or two. Yeah. Fight or flight, <laughs> not cry. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Fight or flight, not cry. <laughs> Good. Point. Um. Absolutely. Uh. But um. Okay. So my number one pick is not surprising at all. It's a. It's another release that we didn't i never presented to the show but that's because it's from an artist that is one of my favorite artists of all time my favorite bands of all time mm. from one of my favorite songwriters of all time Whoa. and we've already reviewed one of their albums so it would be pointless for me to um talk about uh or for me to recommend a, uh, the, their new album i think because at this point i think Everybody who likes this band already knows exactly what they sound like and what to expect from them, but it doesn't make this record any less amazing to me. And that is the new built to spill record that came mm. out this year. Uh, when the wind forgets your name, uh, this band to me is <clears throat> very few bands. Um, I can honestly say has never put out a disappointing record to me. Mm -hmm. Um, and built to spill somehow um year after year that they put out a record and, and i shouldn't say year after year because they're kind of to the point now where they uh kind of put out records whenever they want so mm -hmm. i mean the last proper record they put out was actually 2015 and that was untethered moon uh but they did put out a daniel johnston covers album in 2019 i believe um, so they're, this is their first album of all original material since 2015, mm. you know, but I mean, they're, they're to that point in their career that, 
you know, I think Doug Marsh just kind of, he's just sort of, I'm just going to put out music whenever I want to. I don't think he's contractually obligated by major labels anymore. In fact, I know he's not because uh, they're, this new record came out on sub pop. So I think his major label record deal days are over. So I think, you know, I think it happens to artists who age, uh, mm -hmm. but um, Doug Marsh just happens to be in the camp, in my opinion, uh, where his music ages just like fine wine. Uh, I mean, I just, there's nothing really new about this record that, I mean, I, I do think, built to spill records they all sound different from one another for sure mm -hmm. the record that we reviewed which i remember was um there's nothing wrong with love sounds mm -hmm. incredibly different from like keep it like a secret and mm -hmm. in keep it like a secret sounds incredibly different from you in reverse and you in reverse sounds incredibly different from this record you know and then the, all the records that are in between those records you know but there's still a built to spill sound. You, you're going to hear Doug Marsh's voice. You're going to hear his songwriting. You're going to hear his perky guitar playing and just amazing lyrics. And that's all, that's all here. It's there's, you know, and so when I say that, like, he's not doing anything new, I don't, I, I, sometimes that's just not a bad thing. Sometimes mm -hmm. that's a fantastic thing. Like built to spill just don't need to do anything else than what they do. And, and I, yeah. I'm, in a lot of ways, like, I think that's great because I, I think that means that they're being honest. I, and when I say they, I really do mean Doug Marsh because Doug Marsh is yeah. like, this is a road built to spill is a rotating band, you know, mm -hmm. kind of like Josh Homme with Queens of the Stone Age. There's a different lineup with every single record. Mm -hmm. And so really built to spill is kind of a solo project or a collab, more like a collaboration project. But then as soon as they go out on the road, they then become the band, you know, sort mm -hmm. of thing. The one thing that I really like about this record is that it was the first time. And of course, I think it had to do with COVID. Or at least this is what I under, well, I, I shouldn't say I think it had to do with COVID because it everything had to do with COVID in 2020, you know. Mm -hmm. but I believe he recorded this mostly in his home studio hmm. so that's kind of the first time that that's ever happened with the built to spill record in any situation it's an incredible record for me um mm -hmm. built to spill is not a band that everybody is into as much as i am and that's fine but they're one of my favorite bands and every year that they put out a new record it's probably going to be my favorite album of the year. <laughs> so if you like built to spill and i don't i i I don't know if you've explored Built to Spill beyond. No, I mean, not really. Okay, no. I, I wasn't. I, I wasn't sure if you ever did, Eric. But um, this is. Um, I mean, the the one thing that I think is great about this record too is that, in from my perspective, this would not be a record that I would be opposed to introducing somebody with. You know, because a lot of times. You don't want to introduce somebody to like newer records by bands. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Right. Yep. But this is this is both kind of I feel like something new from mm -hmm. Built to Spill, but also it's kind of um, I don't know, like like it's not too far enough from what what they've done in the past that you can't you can actually say okay if somebody here if this is the first Built to Spill record that somebody hears in 2022 mm -hmm. ever, then it wouldn't be a bad place to start. You're getting good old built to spill here and there's nothing wrong with that. Nice. So, yeah. All right. So my number one, I'm going to try to keep this contained a little bit. My excitement for this though, really pushes the boundaries of kind of decency. <laughs> I really, okay. I really love it. Um, it's a uh, perfume genius. Uh, the record is ugly season. I remember back in mm. um, oh, last year, we uh, talked about Perfume Genius's record, uh, Set My Heart on Fire Immediately, yes, which I did. also went off on like infinitely. 
Uh, the only reason it wasn't my top pick of that year was I didn't hear it till the next year. Um, but uh, Perfume Genius has a new record. It's called Ugly Season. Um, I don't know. Like I said, I'm going to try to keep keep it together here. But uh, it's just gorgeous. <laughs> it, I mean, it is just gorgeous. Um, amazing songs, amazing performances, arrangements. The instrumentation moves through genres and moods just so effortlessly that it 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 honestly feels like they're channeling this music uh, to me i don't know it goes from like um disney-esque uh orchestral moments like john bryan uh who did that extraordinary machine feeling a re- apple record uh, uh yeah, you know, yeah yeah quite a few years ago but so it has that sort of element every once in a while it has deep dub elements it has electronic pop music it has really beautiful piano moments that sort of reminded me of like moon dog or something it's really tense and heartfelt but that tension is relieved um it's really pensive at times uh and then just gives way and opens up to these really beautiful moments it's really pure perfume genius has one of the most beautiful voices i have ever heard in my life like to the level that it can like take your breath away like i'm almost getting choked up talking about it um (laughs) but for real i feel honored to be able to to hear this music And, and i can't really say any more than that about it like i feel lucky to hear it so um anyway uh yeah my first thing that i would compare this to maybe isn't about the sound of it um but more the presentation and the command of um the media um anyone who knows me knows that i hold brian eno in almost a um I don't know, deity level. Uh, Mm -hmm. And Perfume Genius is the only person right now that I would compare, like legit compare to Brian Eno. Not sounds like Brian Eno, but on the same level. Um, Other elements might be like John Cale to an extent, uh, the Chromatics, uh, Jenny Haval, uh, Juju in sort of how tender it can be. Uh, Anthony and the Johnsons as far as the voice to an extent but like I said I, I honestly can't this is everything I like about music um, presented basically in one album and it's it's truly amazing so I think that if you've ever trusted me and my opinion on anything you should check this record out sure yeah, yeah I uh, really like that perfume genius album Mm -hmm. that we reviewed um that was it was so good such a listening experience so i didn't even know that there was a new album that came out this Mm -hmm. year um from them so or is it is it just one guy it is yeah okay Um, yeah um great stuff yeah for sure so i'm i'm gonna have to check this out for sure so there was a lot of great music out this year. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And we only we covered a, a, very little of it. <laughs> yeah, we did very little. You know? um, and even with, do, do you want to just mention some honorable mentions? Absolutely. Um, yeah. You know, and even with our honorable mentions, there's still a ton of music out there that I'm sure has been undiscovered by us. Uh, do you want to go first with your honorable mentions, Eric? Or do you, uh, you can go, go first. Or does it... I need to take okay. a moment and collect myself after that. All right. All right. <laughs> Sounds good. Sounds good. So my first honorable mentions is one of your picks, Kill Alters. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, it, it was just mutant disco industrial or something. I don't even know how to describe it. Mm-hmm. So good. <laughs> so good. I, I almost have the same problem that I do with like exec, you know, mm-hmm. only it's, it's in a much different way. Cause exec, I really can't describe. God, I was blown away by that exec record. <laughs> um, next up is the Glur GP. Another oh, yeah. from another nice. interview that we had, uh, Andrew Stewart Klein. Uh, that was 
that that was another something else, man. I, a lot of weird psychedelic stuff mm -hmm. going on there, but I don't know, man. I'm gonna have to explore Glurge again because it was so good, so good. Quelly Chris Death Fame. I, I mentioned how he was a guest on the Billy Woods album, but that mm -hmm. album is also very good and experimental and weird and kind of all over the place. And production wise, is just almost psychotic at times <laughs> like just for a for a rap record like i don't know man like, uh, like yeah i remember you saying that uh parts of it reminded of reminded you of like soul coughing like almost like mm -hmm. the mechanical aspect of soul coughing like because when you listen to like something like i don't know off of ruby vroom it almost is the sound of like a factory or something like, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, yeah. like just, you know, in your head. And that's, that's kind of how this was at times, just really crazy and kind of went all over, all over the place. Really good stuff. Everything on Pokey's records. I just liked everything from the psyop to super freak to, um, uh, away rots man to animals on LSD to ah oh man i know i'm forgetting at least a couple of releases anyway everything on pokey's records was fantastic so yes i'll just go to pokey's records dot bandcamp.com mm -hmm. to spell p-o-k-e-y-s yes mm -hmm. uh shake them bones that's another iowa release yeah. into the night um fantastic billy woods put out another album called church just as good as Ethiopes, only i would say not nearly it, it's just almost kind of not there, you know, like it, just 1%, not even 1%, it's it's 0.5% less than Atheops. Still there, uh, still amazing, still amazing. Um, Earl Sweatshirt put out a record called Sick, which is fantastic. And he's increasingly kind of going in a direction of like, the backwoods studio experimental type stuff and earl's been one of my favorite mcs i remember we reviewed some rap songs uh what was that was in 2021 i think wasn't it um, yeah another rapper that's on um backwood studio by the name of elucid he put out a really interesting record called i told bessie that's a really good mm -hmm. one uh just some more of this sort of like um experimental beat baking with some really interesting rhymes the soul glow album uh diaspora problems hmm, fantastic sweet. uh yeah. raheem supreme dog on series mm -hmm. uh we reviewed this i really like this record mm -hmm. uh the melvin's record bad mood rising this mm -hmm. is one of the weirdest melvin's records in a long time mm -hmm. it's six tracks and the first track is 14 minutes long it's it's really good. And then the band Cave In, they put out a record called Heavy Pendulum. Mm -hmm. Fantastic stuff. I know that there's other things that I'm missing, but that's pretty much my list of um, honorable mentions. How about you, Eric? Well, yeah, my honorable mentions are, you know, just a mix of things. Some of them are that I just didn't have time to fully get into enough to call them my favorite, you know, even though what I've heard, I really like a lot. Some of them that I also had that you had, I had Shake Them Bones, and I already mentioned Penny Peach, Moody Marlin, the new Glass Ox, Winds of Violence is phenomenal. Oh, I forgot about that. We yeah, should probably yes, talk yes. about that on a future episode. Uh, oh. The new Show Me the Body, I really enjoyed. I just didn't get to spend enough time with it to really in good conscience, put it on my list, you know? Mm -hmm. Hellfire by Black Midi um, was suggested mm -hmm. to me um, by my nephew Owen, and it's phenomenal. I've liked it's Black amazing. Midi for a long time. I don't yep. think we've covered that them, have we? We we never have, but actually right. that record almost made it on my top 10. Yeah, we, we should and cover I, it. I can't believe that I forgot to mention that in my honorable yeah. mention. There's a record... It's by an artist called named Ven Guir. Ven Guir. I don't know how to say it. V e n g 
E U R. Um, mm-hmm. And yeah, the record is called Par Fa et Par Flames. I don't. I'm, I don't speak French. And sorry that, that that's terrible. But you can find it probably based on just what I said. Um, it's really almost like dungeon synth, uh, but with a really sort of more like uh, symphonic black metal element to it, even though it is purely instrumental. So, mm-hmm. yeah, a lot of fun. Um, the new Duster record, or this year's Duster record, it's called Together. Um, it's really good. And Gadzooks Volume 2 by Caleb Landry Jones is uh, really good as well. Um, maybe just a little too Beatlesy for me at times, which is why it didn't make my list. Yeah, and those so are my honorable mentions. We did have a couple of people respond um, to us asking, what are your favorite records? But only a couple, but I'm going to mention them anyway. Um, Ian Kohler said uh, Knobs by Stipple is a a good record. I haven't listened to it yet. Uh, Zach Newman said uh, The Inevitable Fork Volume 1 by Melted Bodies. Uh, It's actually really good. Uh, I listened to that one. And then Owen, who I mentioned earlier, uh, one of his things he sent me was by a group called Blade E. So the word blade with an E at the end. And Echo 2K, Mm -hmm. the record is called Crest. It's really cool. It's like um, hip hop, but like really chill and takes a lot of fun, almost hyper pop risks but not to that extent of like excitement just more of the how it's constructed so that's a couple uh ones that listeners expressed that they liked too so cool yeah cool. pretty fun um, we have given you per near 30 records probably if not more that you should check out yeah um I do think we'll probably be going into more detailed um reviews of some of these as Upcoming yeah, we episodes. got some. Uh, yeah, we got some uh, other, uh, some new, some new stuff coming on the podcast. I think, and that's yeah. going to be, um, that's exciting. That's exciting. So uh, yeah, we this is the, the first, first episode since we officially surpassed ten thousand downloads. Yes. So that's pretty sick. I think. Yeah. Thank you, everyone, for yeah. uh, supporting us and listening. Everyone who has downloaded an episode um mm-hmm. that's amazing i yeah when i started this i didn't never guess that it would what are we this is like what now 87. episode 85 87 87 wow yep. that is the year that look what yep. the cat dragged in came out oh um, one of so, the best albums ever um it, but yeah nice. yeah yeah thanks for listening and if you have friends and they're like Man, I just know I don't know where to find new music, and because I'm old and stuff, just tell them to listen to our show. <laughs> yeah, so, that's that's kind of like why we're here, I think. You know, yeah, like, to help you find cool new music. We're old and stuff too. Happy New Year, also. Happy yeah. New Year. Have a good holidays and New Year's, and yeah, I guess that's about it. That's about it. Peace out, 2022. Out 2022. Wouldn't want to be you. you sometime. <laughs> Wouldn't want to be you. And we'll definitely see you sometime next year. Take care, guys. Bye. Bye.